and say hello in our chat. Uh, today we want to have we want a really really exciting guest. Uh, Zach uh, is coming from Canada. He's one of our digital nomads, and well, I will pass to you, Zach. Thank you so much for coming today, and I'm more than happy to having you here in Fukuoka City. And yeah, please give a little bit info, intro yourself, and what is your background? And yes. Thanks, Pablo. I mean, it's a, a real pleasure to, to be here, and thanks for hosting me today. Um, it's my first podcast as well, so really excited to uh, knowing where this goes. <laughs> so, if you can uh, tell briefly about your background and why why you decide to to come to Fukuoka, what was the main reason? Yeah, I mean that's um, that's a difficult question and it's a long story, but I'll try to distill it into a few minutes. Um, so I recently discovered digital nomadism uh, when I was working as a consultant, and um, I think it was Levels IO. He was the first guy I saw on Twitter, and this guy was traveling the world and he was building startups solo, and it seemed like such a great lifestyle. You know, at that time, uh, I was working as a consultant, so I was working nine to five, and like something struck in my mind. It was like, wait a minute, this lifestyle is possible, mm. right? People around the world are living this lifestyle. Um, so the question that arise is, why can't I live this lifestyle? Correct. Um, so when I discovered Levels IO, I was still working there, but uh, soon after I s tried to, to start my first startup with my buddy, um, you know, had good development in it, and we even spoke to a few uh, YC partners, but unfortunately it didn't go anywhere. But um, that was really the starting point where I was like, man, this, this thing of building startups and, and traveling the world, that's just amazing, right? right. Um, so that's when I left my job in Canada. And I started looking for places, you know, places where I could go for uh, to, to work and build my startups from. And most of digital nomads, they go to Thailand, they go to Vietnam, for example. Uh, That's right. Vietnam actually is really popular for digital nomads, it is. right? And it is, and I almost went there. Almost went oh there wow. in Thailand. <laughs> uh, but th the last second I was like, well, let me see Japan. It looks like a really interesting place, uh, and I feel like it would be really fun. So, it, so in fact, if I'm not wrong, you mentioned before, um, Japan is your first, so Fukuoka City is your first place in Japan. Yeah, that's correct. Wow. Uh, Why not Tokyo? Why no Osaka? <laughs> <laughs> that's the question I usually get. Um, the answer is, uh, I had a friend that came here in Fukuoka last year. Okay. She told me that Fukuoka was amazing. And it was kind of like a startup culture here that was more friendly uh, and, you know, more upgoing than Tokyo. So I had to come check it out. So I took my plane directly from Canada and uh, arrived directly here wow. to Fukuoka. That, that's amazing. And what do you, what? How do you feel? Uh, just how long you've been here in Fukuoka so far? So far, I've been here for three weeks. Three weeks. Um, so quite a uh, quite a short time. But in three weeks, I've had time to to see the city and meet a ton of people. Uh, both in startups, both you know, just going to bars and meeting people. So, wow. it's really an awesome city, um, and I'm really glad that I chose it. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And I guess you have you ever tried the the core, the most popular food in Fukuoka? I guess do you know <laughs> the ramen. Have you ever tried the local food? Of course, food? of course. Yes. Ramen, tsukemen, tsukemen. And <laughs> <laughs> so all of those they're they're great. Yeah, uh, they're awesome and. I think like something really coo cool about Digital Nomad is that since you're not tied to a location, yep. you can go to places like this to build your startup, to work on your agency, to work on, on your personal projects. And uh, what's really cool about Asia in particular mm. is that it, the cost of li living is really cheap. So yeah, that, that's right. So I guess um, our Digital Nomads community, um, we have people from different backgrounds, different countries. and and one of the reasons why they really like Fukuoka is because it's a very convenient city and it's a very compact city. If we compare with Tokyo, it's a mega metropolis, so Osaka. And they also, uh, one of our digital nomads that came, came from Australia and uh, he just stayed for a couple of weeks, but also he, he really, really liked um, the way how you can easily commute in the city by bike, uh, 
the subway it's pretty awesome so yes and have you what is your um personal experience uh, as a digital nomad so what do you what is the most value uh, experience that you can get as a digital nomad yeah that's um that's an interesting question so it's not too solo you don't feel too solo sometimes like i know that's uh, that's the thing so yep. i think there's this preconception that being a digital nomad you have to be uh you know in your lane by yourself doing your stuff working on your project you know uh like people on twitter would say build in private uh but i'm i, I really like to think that there's uh, this new movement coming in which is uh the build in public movement and i really really believe that it's the way to go for uh digital nomad. So let, let me explain a little bit what it is. So, right? W if you're trying to build a project, you're trying to build a startup, you, you work on a podcast, you work on a YouTube channel, you want to have uh, two things that are really important. You want to have a good product, something that you, you like and you dedicate to having the best quality possible. Uh, but the second thing, and most important in my opinion, is having a distribution channel. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the new way to build a distribution channel nowadays, and I, I've seen it on Twitter, and people are starting to catch up on this, is start building your personal brand. Mm. So start uh, you know, building your brand on Twitter, building your brand on YouTube like you're doing, yes. uh, and gather people that are interested in what you're doing. And I think that is very important, and it is uh, maybe the one thing that I found that completely counteracts the usual uh, you know, work by yourself a vibe of solopreneurship, mm. which I really, really like. Wow, that's that's fascinating. And and yeah, um, if I think about myself, like personal experience, I've been I've been uh, been a digital nomad since when I was twenty four years old. I've been moving in different countries, living in the Netherlands, Australia, um, Chile, and now I'm in Japan. So uh, it sounds uh, very familiar what you say about. Uh, I, I also I can say that collaboration is super important. Uh, when yep. you met people in a backpackers or in a hostel, and then you just go to the cafe and start talking with those people, and it's interesting because our community, digital Manabu, digital nomad community, it's all about collaboration. And we think about collaboration; it's a key uh, key element in our community, but also uh, sustainability. And that's, I want to stop a little bit and I want to ask you, what do you think about sustainability? How important <laughs> do you think is, uh, is having a community that is also cared about the planet mm -hmm. and the future? Well, it's certainly very important, right? Um, we're, all, we're all here on this planet and we're all sharing the same environment. So to me, it would be super counterintuitive to prioritize you know, money or other things uh, in detriment of the planet. So. Even if my focus in my business is not necessarily sustainability, I always try to have a certain perspective that tells me, you know, is there something that I could do that could help the community in a sustainable way? Uh, so for me, I'm aiming at building a community of people that are excited to work on their dreams and, and ideas that contribute to people. Um, so yeah, so like you said, sustainability is very important in my opinion. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. And yeah, I guess for us um, and for the people who, the audience that are listening to us today, uh, briefly, let me explain you about digital and uh, Manabu digital nomads. Manabu in Japanese, it means learn. Or and what we are doing in our communities, our core values are collaboration, mm. um, sustainability, but also we are very techpreneur community as well and that's I think it, it's according to the data um, and I think it, this is a huge wave coming to Japan digital nomads uh, expect to grow uh, up to a uh, 70% in the next coming year coming yeah. years and also uh, it's a huge market it's a 35 million digital nomads yeah. like you uh, in different countries in different countries different cities and if we think about how important it's going to be for governments, um, policies. I think uh, it's really important also to think about that Japanese government uh, to consider, and now I think it, it they're considering to, to create a new digital nomad visa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, over five 55 countries wor worldwide. They have a, 
uh, digital nomad visa. And I hope, I hope that we uh, Japanese government can also open a visa that is more than 90 days from six months up to one year. And that will allow many uh, foreigners, solopreneurs like you and many others like myself coming to Japan, explore the beauty of Japan and also support the local communities. And that's something very important. So that's totally right. And I think it's a movement that we're seeing right now is that, you know, AI is a big topic right now and, and we're trying to analyze what is the impact on the workforce or how people want to work. Um, in my opinion, we're only growing towards a more uh, digital nomad uh, slash solopreneur type uh, business models for people because AI is enabling stuff that you couldn't do before, right? As a solo team, I can code with AI now. I can market Correct. with AI. I can build a personal brand with yes. AI. Um, so I think what's what that's going to do is allow people to be f a little bit more free in terms of their decision. So previously, people would think that they need, with their skill set, they need to stay in their city. You know, they need to work for a certain company in a nine to five or a corporate. But now with Correct. this expanding opportunity of AI and, and you know personal branding, I think people are going to soon realize that their skill sets that they're building in the tra traditional corporate hierarchy has a lot more leverage when applied you know around the globe and throughout different communities like Twitter, uh, like YouTube, like yep. your digital nomad community, and. Um, you know, I think in the following years, places like here, like Fukuoka, places like Thailand, places like Vietnam, I think they're going to see a, a lot of lot of new visitors uh, Correct. just because of this. Yes, and I, I, I agree with you. And I think it is something really exciting for us because uh, we are a very new community. Um, uh, we are just, uh, our hub is here in Fukuoka <laughs> City, but also we have a different hubs. One is in Australia and Australia in Brisbane City. And we have a different Facebook group communities that uh, we all uh, connect, uh, we share the uh, same values, but also we share some parties, eba events, uh, activities. So, right. so what, kind of, what kind of activities have you done here in, in Fukuoka City? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've been working a lot, but yep. what I find cool about these Asian cities, like, like Fukuoka here, is that even if you work a lot, even if you go to WeWork and you work, you know, 10 hours a day, uh, you could go at night and there's a lot of action going. There's so many activities, there's so many bars and good food around. And people are, are all very uh, nice, so they're all very open. That's so nice. So what I found really cool about being here is that you could work your entire day. Yes. But still, you don't really feel like you sacrifice that much of your social life. Yes. Which I find is a is a cool point. Yeah, that's 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 wonderful. And one thing uh, I, I believe uh, is I think uh, one what things that I believe it will be super important also those digital nomads coming to like you from Canada or from mm. Australia to Japan we we it's important to understand that Japan is a very uh, traditional and and very they value their respect of their culture. And that's something that um, I believe that uh, those digital nomads in our community, what we mention deeply the respect to our, we are visitors in this country. We try to uh, help and support the local communities, but at the same time, very uh, respectful for all their, their local values and the local uh, uh, activities, what they do. So we, we believe in the, in the warmness uh, um, the of the Japanese <laughs> uh, culture, we we'll all love Japan for many reasons, the food, the culture, the people. But I think it's something that we need to consider and taking very uh, serious is when we come to Japan, it's also important to at least to understand or, or, or say some Japanese word, right? And arigato gozaimasu, hello, konnichiwa. It just show the respect to the local people, so it's super important. So, what do you think about that? I mean, I, t I totally agree, and it's it doesn't matter where you go. I strongly believe that wherever you go, you you have to have an open mind, and try to adapt your culture to to the people there, because they're opening their arms to you. Uh, so it would be unfair, I believe, 
to come here and impose my values, impose my Correct. culture on the people. Correct. So to me, I'm just like a child, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm exploring this yeah. culture and it's amazing. Yeah. So I'm just adapting to the people here. I'm learning the language. And wow. And I think that's a very important point of, of being a digital nomad is that w to the many places that you go, you acquire a bit of the culture and you adapt it to you. So yes. you learn something to every new place right. that you go. Um, so in Japan, it might be you know respect and humbleness and, and you know tradition, all that kind of Correct. stuff. Correct. Um, so yeah, I, I do believe that it's very important. To yes. Be wow. That's that's yeah. It's it remind me when I was traveling in Thailand and I went to a local local place. It was a were doing uh, some work in a local cafe and then it was a very long day and then I went to um, a cafe nearby and the people were so amazing, so nice, so welcoming. Like, you know, you're a foreigner and just please sit with us. And you know, one thing that happens to me in Fukuoka was uh, two years ago during the pandemic, it was, uh, I was uh, walking in, uh, working in different places around Kyushu area and I went to a very remote island in Fukuoka near to here, Kyushu. And, you know, I was riding my bicycle and then I saw a group of Japanese people in, in near to the ocean. And the people stopped me and I said, Suimasen, hey, come, come, they invite me. So I was just solo guy ri riding the bicycle and then I s they stopped me and they invite me to sit with them. And they share sake, uh, we they share the food with me. I was like, kind of, Oh my God, as a, as a, I feel like, I'm, wow, those people, they don't know me, but I guess uh, they saw a foreigner riding a bicycle in the middle of nowhere, and there's a, a group of fishing, fish, fishermen, and it was so valuable, so beautiful experience for me, because they, they have a really big <laughs> sake, bot uh, bottle of sake. We share, uh, we laugh, I couldn't understand fully Japanese, but uh, it was uh, wonderful. So I think this is um, something that I, I want to, share with the, our audience is that Japan is, a, is a such a wonderful country and it's not only in the big cities and that's why we w this is why we are in, in Fukuoka we believe the core of the value of communities are not in the big cities are also in the small local towns and village yeah totally agree yeah so um, do you have um, any advice for any of the fellow uh, nomads that um, are locals that they're they would like to visit Fukuoka? What kind of um, experience you can share with them? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Um, well, I think this advice applies to anywhere you go as a digital nomad, but I think people shouldn't be afraid to get out of their comfort zone and uh, initiate conversations with people. So wherever you go, wi if it's a bar, if it's a restaurant, or if it's a cafe like we're here, um, if you like what someone is doing or you like their, their, their vibe or whatever, just go reach out to them. You'll start talking to them. And I mean, that's, that's the way we yeah, met, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. We're uh, at a bar and then we just star started chatting. Um, and I think that is a very important element of digital nomad in general uh, is that you really decide the pace of your journey. So if you stay in your room, for example, you don't speak to anyone, you, mm. you don't want to explore your culture, then of course your experience is going to be less cool than if you'd go out there, speak to people, meet founders, you know, yeah. uh, meet projects and, and go talk to uh, local people that they show you around. And I think, you know, as a startup founder, as you are, that is a very important element is the element of enabling new opportunities for yourself. And that is through meeting with people. That's, that's r you're right. And, uh, and just, we, we don't have enough time. It's going to be our first uh, session. So uh, I guess uh, one thing that we can recall in our conversation today was uh, fantastic uh, talking to you, Mike. Um, it was very uh, nice to know your uh, experience as a solopreneur, uh, digital nomads, and yeah, and it was it was glad that you uh, we have the opportunity to meet to meet each other and then you visit to to Fukuoka. 
So before before we end in this um, podcast uh, live sessions, uh, what you can say to our global digital nomads that are based in Australia? Uh, we have uh, around uh, more than 10 countries in our communities from Australia, Canada, uh, US, uh, Italy, Chile, uh, Taiwan, so on. So any anything that you would like to say to our community and inviting them to visit Fukuoka? I'd say definitely come here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's an awesome place. People are so kind. The food is amazing. The city is upgoing. It's vibrant. Um, so... I, I believe in exploring for yourself, uh, but don't set limits for yourself as well. So I had maybe the preconception that in Japan you, you kind of had to speak the language to meet people and make friends and stuff like that. Uh, but since I'm here, I realize that actually, no, you just need to be open and be nice. And if you're open and you're willing to learn about Japanese culture, then definitely come here to Fukuoka. It's a great city and there's so many opportunities and especially with the rise of digital nomadism, I think this city is going to grow a ton in the next few years. That's that's fantastic. And um, again, thank you so much for uh, having this, uh, our first podcast uh, in Japan. And we also really want to say thank you to uh, our great support, technical support here from uh, Engineering Cafe. This is the place where we are doing this uh, podcast session today. Uh, we really appreciate it. This is a one of the f many uh, facilities, uh, areas that all digital nomads, techpreneurs, or people who want to come to Japan, they can use for free. And this is something really incredible that we really appreciate uh, the local government and Fukuoka City provide these incredible facilities that we, as a foreigners, we can use and expand and help to, to make a little bit more uh, global these communities. So. Again, thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita for all everyone here. And thank you, you, my friend. And I really appreciate you, your time. Thank you, Pablo. It was great to be here. Well, I will see you next next time. If you want to know more about our digital nomad communities, you can go to digitalnomads.jp or check our websites and our Facebook group. So feel please feel free to join. And we have a different memberships uh, from individual members but also we have a corporate member. So thank you so much again, and I will see you in the next time. Maybe, I hope, in another online, in somewhere in the world, <laughs> you and me here in Fukuoka. Definitely. That was fun. Okay. Thanks, Pablo. Thank you so much. See we you really soon. Arigato gozaimasu. See you.